Hey guys, welcome back to day two of Alliance Tournament 14. You're back in the studio with Jintan, Ryloud, and myself, Apothne, uh, looking for this match between Out of Sight and Serlafi. Out of Sight beating Methodical Alliance in the first round, then losing to Hard Knock Citizens. Uh, Serlafi losing to Velour with their Moamata, and then beating Shadow Cartel and knocking them out of the tournament. Uh, if we look at the comps they brought last, Out of Sight brought a bargain team with a Typhoon fleet, two Barghests and a Typhoon fleet, lots of missiles, with a Legion, a Damnation and a Griffin, so undermanned, mm -hmm. trying to do the whole Tinkerino. Um, Solar Feet brought a Balgorn, two Apoc Navies, a Rapier, an Execrer, a Blackbird and four Bombers. Mm -hmm. So two very uh, off-meta, shall we say, teams yeah. there. Uh, what do you think of these teams so far in the tournament? Let's start with you, Jin Tan. Well, we're obviously seeing that um, the Russians have a very different meta. Um, and we should probably talk about why that is. Mm. The Russians tend to practice amongst themselves as opposed to with the English-speaking groups just for ease of communication and mm. being able to organize that sort of thing. So we tend to see the Russian teams appear with a very different take on the meta, and that's always very interesting to see, especially when East and West collides, normally sometime around the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. um, honestly, I think both teams are doing reasonably well so far, especially with their uh, with their very off meta style. Um, so all I can really say really, the Enderman setup I wasn't really too big of a fan of, uh, just considering that uh, Tinkers themselves are just not that strong anymore. If you actually brought, like, if you had cap transfers with that, it probably would have survived, but obviously you can only bring a regen uh, tech threes, and they're not as strong, but they can still do some damage. Our solar fleet, Bringing like a bomber, bomber all in, which uh, it can work, but you have to play it right, and unfortunately, it didn't play well with them. Yeah, so if we bring APOC navies, a ship Navpox. we haven't seen much of in this tournament, what are you guys' thoughts towards the effectiveness of Navpox in the tournament setting, given that we've seen so few of them? Wilo, why don't you start us off? Uh, I love navy APOCs. I think they're, I think they're a good ship. Honestly, they can track. They have really amazing tracking. They have a tracking bonus. They have an optimal rage bonus, mm. so they can shoot really far. They do have quite a lot of downsides with that, though. They do a bit of DPS, like 600-ish. Uh, they're quite slow. They don't really have many mids. They only have four mids. Uh, they don't have a utility high either, but, I mean, that's the cost of having an amazing tank, and you can shoot pretty much 100 kilometers in the arena with awesome tracking as well. So you can pretty much do, like, a pseudo-boom headshot with uh, any shield support. Um, I really like them, but they're not really that much into the matter. I know that PFR last AT actually ran Navy Apox and had quite great success with them when uh, they went against some TFI calls, so how about you? Jintan, uh, you are, you know, part of uh, the I'm glorious Amar Empire in game. <laughs> um, tell us your thoughts on the glorious Apoch Navy. Um, personally, I just feel that in a tournament setting, it's subpar to the Armageddon Navy issue. I feel that the Armageddon Navy issue gives quite a lot more to an AT team as it brings a bigger, a much bigger drone, bo uh, drone bay mm -hmm. so it can field a full flight of heavy rep drones which as, we, as we've seen is a huge addition of power to the Typhoon fleet issue and one of the reasons why it's so prevalent in the meta and also it gets an extra high slot which mm -hmm. allows you to put in one of those glorious neutralizers or smart bombs which are so uh, important to the success of the team. Well, we are very nearly at match time, so let's take it over to the commentators for Out of Sight versus Solar Fleet. That does make mining less suicidal as well.
I'm Rain Chocolate, and I'm joined by Suetonia, and we are going to be commentating on the Solar Fleet versus Out of Sight. Solar Fleet has brought a Balgorn, two Navy, two Navy Apox, Guardian, Rapier, Double Manticore, Double Nemesis, and and a, a Reaper. That's actually kind of weird. Okay, Suetonia? So, uh, out of sight, I have two Macarials, two Slemners, two Scalpels, two Federation Navy Comets, and two Griffins. Very symmetrical setup. Uh, the bans for this match are really, really weird. Solar Fleet decided to ban out Tengu and Legion for some reason. Yeah, I find that kind of interesting since normally we would expect the Tengu and Legion bans from someone sometime like last year for when Tinkers were actually super popular. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any Tengu or Legion compositions do well at all. They've always seemed to fail. It's just weird that they decided to ban those out. So the match is starting now. Let's see what happens. Yep, and if we watch, the um, the Balgorn has actually warped a little closer than the rest of his fleet. That's obviously because the Balgorn actually has really good range for newts and webs. So he'll want to be closer to apply that. Yeah, we're seeing a Griffin straight away from Sunskull. He's down already. We already lost a Griffin for the out of side sides. Yeah, clearly See, Solar Fleet does not like those ECM potential. Yeah, I mean, no, no one likes ECM, you know, you always primary Griffins. So we're seeing the next Griffin of her uh, Hell Otaria now uh, taking some damage. It doesn't seem like he's a primary target, though. Well, we're seeing Alphside put damage on the Navy Apocalypse for the Solar Fleet side. Yeah, and that Navy Apox actually is jammed, nuded, and then attempting to receive reps from this Solo Guardian. But it's it doesn't look like he's holding too well. He's a little above half... Oh, and he's being nuded too. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's important to note that this Balgon is not the flagship Balgon. Both Solar Fleet and Outside both lost their flagships already. See a Comet go down for the out of sight side. The Navy Apoc seems to be holding in, a, in about half armor, while we're seeing the support of out of sight just get shredded. These Comets and Griffins uh, don't have Tech 2 resistances. They're not uh, easy to hold up, especially the Comets as well. They're not very... Uh, they only have three mids. You can't really get a solid shield tank out of them. The Comets down. Yeah, it's, I'm curious to see as to why why uh, Out of Sight only brought, brought like, Comets instead of, say, any other Tech 1 frigate. Do you know, have it, do you have any insight into that, Suetonia? Uh, I'm not sure why you'd Comets. I mean, they, they do look really good with the Police Comets skin. Maybe that's why they bought them. I mean, that, that is true. Although I figured, like, especially with the point reduction with the crews, most people would have brought crews for that extra new um, and web power from, from because they're Blood Raider ships. Plus, they're actually less points because this Alliance tournament is Blood Raider themed. Yeah, I think, you know, a, a Kadari Navy hook bill would have been better in almost every way there with the extra mids, and it would have fit this team a bit better, I think. We're seeing the Nemesis for Solar Fleet taking some damage now, but it looks like he's holding. Uh, Navy Apoc is still going down. We're seeing the reps drop from the Guardian. Maybe he's getting jammed out by that sole remaining Griffin. Yeah, exactly. Um, it looks like the Griffin has actually tried to spread jams, which might not be too good, but there's also a Newt on this Guardian, which I know Guardians generally are, if ever, are never cap stable, so that could be having a detriment to his repping power. And his Navy Apoc is probably going down because of it. Yeah, we're seeing him put uh, reps back on the Nemesis and the, the Apoc. Now the Apoc is probably going to go down. There he goes. But is it enough? I mean, Alves have already lost uh, almost all of their support. The last Griffin now is webbed and neutered. He's probably going to be dying pretty soon. We're seeing them put DPS on the second Navy Apoc. Would you go for the Navy Apoc now, though? Because the Guardian is still alive. Uh, without the Griffin there, he's going to be uh, much. He's going to be able to keep reps on the Navy Apoc, probably, unless the the new pressure from the Sepnis and the Macarios are going to shut down his reps. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on. These all of these battleships are webbed, with with a couple of them being muted and nost. But it doesn't seem like they were really helping their support fleet out at all. I think they maybe killed one, a, a Manticore, but they're not really shooting. And defending all those, all of their like frigate support, and thus wise, the frigates have actually died. It seems it seems kind of weird having all battleships and then all frigates. Like I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, I I really don't like the team that Out of Sight brought, but uh, we're seeing DPS now spread a split a bit between Navy Apoc and Guardian. Looks so like they've gone off the Guardian again now and onto the Navy Apoc. It looks like they got ECM drones or something. There's still an ECM effect on the Guardian. I guess what they're doing is they're trying to just pray for a jam on the Guardian, and maybe they can kill the Navy Apoc. It does look like they're going to take down this Navy Apoc though, even despite the Guardian rep still being up. Yeah, so these battleships and battle cruisers are quickly going down after these 
these other uh, DPS boats upon on the solar fleet side. So I'm guessing, even though it may not be like too smart of an idea right away, but if they can get this DPS down, then like a Hugin or a rapier, apologies, the rapier actually won't be able to apply much DPS. And then all you really have are these bombers, which may not be able to do much. They still are a lot of DPS, but like without the battleship support, they might not be doing well. Yeah, we're seeing the, the Alpha Side team now switch to the Balgon, just trying to shred through the battleship of Solar Fleet. If they do manage to kill this Balgon, the, the, the bombers are probably going to have a harder time killing the Slepnir. They won't apply full damage. Well, they, they probably will actually, because they have the Rapier on the Solar Fleet side. So, who knows? But I mean, it's going to be a lot harder for them to, to win with just the bombers left if they do lose this Balgon. Out of sight are still ahead on points, but I think Solar Fleet are winning. They've only lost three ships, a Manticon, two Apox, versus Out of Sight losing almost everything. And one of the Slepners losing one of their links as well is probably going to be a huge deal to the Out of Sight team. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what this Rapier was fit with. It doesn't, I don't know if he's like, I think maybe boosting this, uh, this Guardian. Because I haven't seen any sort of ECM from him. I'm not quite sure what, what would be the point of, or not Rapier, Reaper. Apologies, team. Yeah, well, I, like I believe the Reaper does get a, a does get a bonus to a target painting. Maybe he's like kind of like a ghetto target painter. I mean, it could be. It would probably put him on on par with then, I guess the Kaldari Ibis. But yeah, I'm not quite sure why. I'm still struggling with why a Reaper. And so it looks like um, out of sight. While well, their materials taking damage, they're actually being able to apply to this Nemesis and Balgorn a little bit. Oh, we are seeing uh, actually remote sensor boosters effects from the Reaper onto the Guardian, so I guess he's just there to safeguard against ECM teams. Just fit to, like two remote sensor boosters on the Reaper, it doesn't really matter what ship it is, just getting those uh, two remote sensor boosters for one point is pretty awesome. Yeah, and so why Out of Sight actually has um, less ships on the field, they still have more points. So getting rid of those battleships and battle cruisers earlier from the Solar Fleet is actually paying off, paying off in the point game. Yeah, Manticore down, uh, Solar Fleet are losing some of their DPS now. Without that Manticore there, the Ma the Makero can probably hold out a bit better. But I still think he's probably going to go down. Yeah, Same DPS lose... now on a Nemesis. Yeah, but if they lose this Makero, then they're going to be down like how, like 20 points. And so then they're going to have to really, really catch... It's going to be really hard for them to catch up, especially without that DPS. Yeah, this Makero is kind of holding in there. I think if the Nemesis drops, he might be able to last a bit longer, but now he's just going through his uh, structure, HP now. Uh, really interested in see why Solar Fleet banned Tengu Legion. Maybe it's just like troll bans, who knows? Yeah, or maybe, I mean, I guess, uh, I know this, the analyst desk, they talked a little bit about how Russians really practice amongst themselves, so maybe it has something to do with they, like one team had a really good Tengu Legion comp, I'm not sure. And with that, their Makarial's down, so now they are actually behind in points. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to catch up. Yeah, I think it's over now for the outside team. Now that they only have one Makarial and one Slepner alive, they only have Red Bots on one ship. They're probably going to have a difficult time breaking anything. Or saying that, check AD's Nemesis is in trouble. He's in armor. We're still not seeing any reps on him. So Nemesis Guardian was down. Not, Guardian was not able to rep him at all, even though it saved the other Nemesis earlier. Maybe he's uh, prematurely celebrating and uh, took his hands off the keyboard or something. It could be. I mean, like I said, you don't really want to celebrate until after the fight's over. Um, it doesn't look like they're actually, I think they're starting to shoot the second material, but they're not actually able to, like, do much damage to him. I'm not quite sure what is going on. These materials are also webbed and nuded, so they're just, like, not moving anywhere. We'll see. I mean, it, out of sight need to take 12 more points to win this. If they killed the rapier... They would be ahead on points if their Makario and Slepnir survive. What they really want to do right now is just try and kill something to get enough points before the timer ticks down to zero. Because I think this match is probably going to go to time. I don't see this Makario dying in two minutes. It seems like the DPS of Solar Fleet is really low. I think this Balgun is probably just a max control Balgun with seven newts because the, their attack bar is actually smaller. Than, it's actually more, less than half of out of sight. That's why having a Nemesis and a Balgun on the field on top of the rapid lights from the Rapier. So uh, I don't think Solar Fleet are going to be able to to kill any of these two ships before the time goes down. What? Yeah, there's, there's only a minute and a half left. I don't think they can do it. That's They haven't even started on the Reaper. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. 
Before yeah, out, out of sight anything. needs to kill the Rapier, the Guardian, or the Balgon if they want to win this match. I mean, as the timer ticks down, they, they need to kill this Rapier, I think. I don't know why they're not on the Rapier unless he's really far uh, back or uh, playing really I'm... defensively. So that could be a factor, although I know they've tried to break this Guardian and it hasn't worked in the past. I'm not quite sure what's going on. And oh, the Reaper well. goes down. Wow, one shot. That is, that is a free point. I mean, you might as well kill it, I guess. They probably should have killed that to begin with. They should have identified the remote sensor boosters effect from him because that really hurt the two Griffins. They did actually get one jam on the Guardian at some point, so uh, if they killed the Reaper earlier, maybe they would have got more luck with their jams. Yeah, that would have been a good strategy. I'm still confused as to why Out of Sight actually brought um, the Comets. I don't, uh, that really confuses me as to why Comets over any other, I guess, T1 frigate, or even if they just dropped a pilot and had something T2 or like a destroyer. I think that would have been a lot better for them. What are your thoughts, Suetonia? I, I don't know why they brought Comets. <laughs> I, I guess just like the Haley's Comet, they're only going to win like once every couple of de decades. Yeah, and with that, the time time is up. Victory goes to Solar Fleet, and with that, we'll send it to the boys in the studio. It's just like pure chemical smoke. Wait. Hey guys, welcome back from Solar vs. Out of Sight, the return of the Napok. Jin Tan, tell us about that match. Well, it seems like Out of Sight need to, need to write an e a letter to, to Princess Celestia, because that is the end of the episode for them. They are now out of the tournament. Mm. And to a team that was fielding a Reaper, no less. Yeah. I think that might be the first ever appearance of it in the tournament. Uh, the Reaper was being used, I think, dual target painter because yeah, it has a native target.